Hello, I'm Chris. You've been learning to drive and it might have taken you weeks, months, or even years for you to be ready, but the day of your driving test has finally come around. In this video, we're going to have a look at what you can expect on the day. Hopefully, after watching this video, you'll feel a little less anxious about your test. Firstly, make sure you've got the right date and time. It's well worth double checking the email confirmation that you should have received. Sometimes the DVSA have to reschedule tests, so keep up to date with your emails. It's also worth looking in your spam folder from time to time, just in case you have an important email from them. Your driving test won't go ahead if there's bad weather, such as flooding, thick fog, high winds, or when the roads are icy. Call your local test centre if there are any of these conditions on the day. You can find the phone number on your booking confirmation email. If you're going for the test with your driving instructor, then you'll probably do a one hour driving lesson before. Get your documents ready to take with you. If you have it, you need to take your theory test pass certificate and your provisional license. If you don't have a photo card license, but the old style paper license, then you'll also need to bring a valid passport. If you're taking your own car for the test, then have a look at the website in the description to make sure it meets certain rules. For example, making sure you have the legal tyre tread depth on each tyre. Hopefully the drive before your test will calm you down a little. But try not to do too much before your test, as you'll want to be at your best and not tired of driving. Make sure that you arrive for the test on time. If you're later than five minutes, then there's a good chance that your test won't go ahead. Arriving too early could also be a problem, as you might get in the way of other learner drivers returning from their driving test. Try to arrive at the test centre roughly 10 minutes early. Some test centres are situated within a business park. If it is, look out for signs directing you where to go and where to park. There might also be a lower speed limit. If the test centre has a car park, then it might be a good idea to reverse into the bay, so that you're ready to easily drive forward at the start of the test. Not all test centres have a car park. If the one you're going to doesn't, make sure that you park reasonably close to the test centre. Park somewhere that's easy to move off from. And don't forget where you've parked. Also, bear in mind that the test centre might not have a toilet, or the toilet might be closed. And don't forget to switch off your mobile phone. It's now time to try and relax in the waiting room. There will be other candidates also waiting here for the same test time as you. Out of the whole test, this is probably the part where you'll feel the most tense. Take a seat and try and chat with your instructor or whoever's with you to try and stay calm. It's a good idea at this point to get your license out and ready to show the examiner. At the time of your test, a few examiners will enter the waiting room and one of them will call your name and ask to see your provisional license. As the examiner checks your license, they'll ask you to read and sign the insurance and residency declaration. Tick two boxes on the tablet if it's true and sign your usual signature, the same as on your license. The examiner will also ask to confirm if the address on your license is still correct and how you'd like to receive the summary of your test. The summary confirms the outcome of the test, list any driving faults, information on getting further training, and information about booking another test if you were unsuccessful. The examiner will then ask you if you want your instructor or person who accompanied you to go with you on the test. This is totally your choice, but they wouldn't be allowed to help or interfere with your driving in any way or the test would be terminated. If you decide that you want them to come along, then they should sit behind you. The examiner will also ask you if you'd like your instructor or accompanying driver to be there for the result and end of test feedback. Again, this is your choice, 
but it can be very useful for your instructor to listen to, especially if you've failed, as they'll be able to help you improve. The examiner will then ask you to lead the way to your car. They'll introduce themselves and ask you what name you'd prefer to be called. They will ask where you've parked, and then you'll be asked to read a number plate of a random vehicle, but not of the car you've been driving. Remember to wear glasses or contact lenses if you need them. If it's a new style number plate, then it'll be from a distance of 20 meters, or an old style number plate from 20 and a half meters. If you can't read it, then you'll be given another chance with a different plate. If you can't read that, the examiner will measure the exact distance from another plate. And if you can't read it again, then unfortunately it will be a test fail. Once you've read the number plate, you'll walk to your car. During the walk or in the car, the examiner will ask you if you'd like them to explain a little bit about the test before starting. If you agree, they'll say, the test will last about 38 to 40 minutes and will include about 20 minutes of independent driving and various road and traffic conditions. I will ask you to complete one manoeuvre and we may carry out an emergency stop. The sort of things you've been practicing with your instructor or accompanying driver. Believe it or not, the driving examiner is just a normal person doing their job. They're friendly and sometimes chatty. Don't be afraid to ask them any questions regarding the driving test or things in general. Once you're at the car, they'll ask you one tell me question, also known as the vehicle safety questions or the show me tell me questions. This might be asked when you're outside the car or once you're inside. An example of a tell me question would be, open the bonnet and tell me how you check that the engine has sufficient engine coolant. You'd have to open the bonnet, identify the coolant reservoir and explain how you check. One show me question will be asked later whilst you're driving. That's where you'd actually have to demonstrate how you'd use a control. For example, when it's safe to do so, can you show me how you'd switch on your dipped headlights? Only demonstrate it when it's safe and there's not much going on. Getting one or both questions wrong is a driving fault or a minor as they're commonly called. You won't fail your test unless you lose control of your car when answering the show me question. There's a total of 21 questions. It's well worth going through these and the car you're going to take for the test. The driving examiner will have a quick check around the car and if you're not already in the car, ask you to get in and make yourself comfortable. Once inside, they might place a sat-nav on the dashboard. We'll talk more about the sat-nav later. If you've taken your instructor's car, the examiner will then write down your instructor's details. Before you drive off, they'll say, throughout the drive, continue ahead unless traffic signs direct you otherwise. When I want you to turn left or right, I'll tell you in plenty of time. Move off when you're ready, please. During the test, the examiner doesn't talk very much. Not because they're in a bad mood and dislike you, but they just want you to fully concentrate and not put you off. You're allowed up to 15 driving faults during the test, often called minor faults. A driving fault is not potentially dangerous, but if you keep making the same fault, then it could become a serious fault. A serious or dangerous fault would be a test fail. A serious fault is something that could potentially be dangerous. And a dangerous fault involves actual danger to you, the examiner, the public or property. Part of the test involves you driving independently for about 20 minutes. The examiner will ask you to pull up on the left and either ask you to follow directions from a sat-nav or follow traffic signs. They'll let you know when the independent driving has finished and then direct you as normal. 
if you have to follow directions from a sat-nav, the examiner will set it up for you, as you won't be allowed to touch it or use your own. The sat-nav will talk to you. At the end of the road, turn left, then sharp right. And on the screen, you'll be able to see how far away the next direction is. Turn left, then sharp right. Only have a quick glance at it though. Don't stare at it or let it distract you from your driving. One in five tests don't involve a sat-nav at all. Instead, you'll have to follow traffic signs. If the sign is hard to read as it's blocked by an overgrown tree, for example, then the examiner will help and give you directions until you can see the next sign. If you're unsure or forget where the next direction is, you can just ask for the instructions to be repeated. You won't get penalised for asking, and you won't get any faults if you miss a turn or take the wrong road. As long as you're driving safely and correctly, the examiner or sat-nav will just direct you back en route. During your drive, you'll be asked to pull up on the left behind another vehicle to see how you move off from a tighter space. You can also expect a hill start. You'll be asked to carry out one reversing manoeuvre, which could be during the independent drive. This could be pulling up on the right hand side of the road and then reversing two car lengths. And then rejoin traffic. Parallel parking. Driving forward into a bay and reversing out. Or reversing into a bay and driving forward out. Along with one of those manoeuvres, the examiner might also ask you to carry out an emergency stop. During the test, don't think you failed or dwell on any mistakes. It will only distract you. Staying focused and positive is really important. Of course, looking at what the examiner's doing on the tablet won't help. But bear in mind that they do make a note of other things, not just faults. So remember to keep calm and concentrate on what you need to do. At the end of the test, the examiner will ask you to pull up and switch off the engine. They will then take a moment to finish their report. You will then be asked if you want your instructor to listen to the result and feedback. If you do, and they're not already in the car, then the examiner will call them over and tell you that you've either passed or failed. If you failed, the examiner will say, I'm sorry, but you haven't passed. Would you like me to explain why? It's a good idea to say yes, but you don't have to. If you'd like an explanation, then listen carefully and make sure that you understand why you failed. A summary report will be emailed to you within minutes of you finishing your test which will show the faults you made. Of course, learn from the faults, improve, come back for another test, and hopefully pass. When you book another test, you'll have to pick a date at least 10 working days away. If you passed, then it'll be very easy to get excited and just stop listening to the examiner. But you'll need to try and keep listening. The examiner will briefly go over any faults, and ask to see your license again, and if you want your full license to be sent to you automatically. If you do, the examiner will take away your provisional license. If you don't want to receive your license automatically, because you need to tell the DVLA that you've changed your address for example, then you must apply for your full driving license within two years of passing your test. The examiner will then read you a health declaration. A summary report will be emailed to you within minutes of you finishing your test, which will show any faults you made. They will then give you a lovely pass certificate. You are now allowed to drive on your own. Keep this safe though in case you ever need to prove that you passed your test. 
you should receive your new license within about 20 working days. Whether you pass or fail, your instructor will probably drive you home, as you'll either be too happy or sad to drive. If you've got your driving test coming up soon, then remember that it's normal to feel nervous on the day of your driving test. You've practiced everything the examiner will ask you to do, there won't be any horrible surprises, and the examiner isn't expecting perfection. Try not to doubt yourself. After all, you must be ready for the test, or otherwise your instructor won't be taking you. Do your best to keep calm, but if you feel really nervous, then maybe try to imagine that you're just going for another driving lesson with a different instructor. Avoid getting a driving fault by learning all the show me, tell me questions. Watch this video next to get fully ready. Good luck if you have a driving test coming up soon, and let us all know in the comments below if you passed or failed. As always, thanks very much for watching, and if you haven't subscribed already, then please do as it really helps us make more videos. In the meantime, keep safe on the road, and bye for now.